Hello there everyone, my name's Lost and welcome back to Let's Build a Binding of Isaac clone. Today we're going to make our character shoot tears. Um, and the way we're going to do that is quite simple. First off, what we need to do is we need to create a new sprite. So let's do that and we're going to call it SPR tier. Now go into edit a sprite, we'll make a new one and you can leave it as 32 by 32, that's fine. So let's open this up and zoom in. And now we're going to select the circle tool here. And I suppose we will make it maybe this color. Feel free to choose any color you like, but I'm going to make it this one. So let's drag from the top left all the way to the bottom right. So that's our tier. Let's fill it. And we'll use the magic wand just to remove the outsides, just to make sure they don't show up again. Because all we want to see is this circle, not any of the white surrounding it. So we will tick, and that's fine. Now we will press OK. In fact, you can center that. Go ahead and center that first, and then press OK. So all we need to do now is we need to make it an object. So Let's put OBJ tier and we will link the sprite to the object like that. And all you need to do now is hit OK. So now we need to figure out how we're going to fire the tier. And to achieve that, it's actually very easy. All we need to do is go back into Object Player and we will go to the Step Event. Now, if you remember before, we have our keyboard checks for WASD. We're just doing the exact same thing but this time for up, down, left and right. So let's put that in. It's going to look something like this. So keyboard check and then instead of writing odd and then a letter this time we're going to use VK up. And I believe all that stands for is virtual keyboard up. Now, if you remember last time, we would put the brackets here. And that's fine if you're only having one line of code. We're going to be having more than one line, so we need to set it out like this. Just like that. Now, what we want to do is, um, let's just test that that works. So, we're going to instance create um, xy object here. Now, what that does, so what that does essentially is um, it will create objects here on the player, on the player's x and y coordinates. So let's just see if that works. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's have a look. Yeah, that that's working. That's working. It's creating what we will, you know the tier what we've asked. I mean, obviously we we don't want it to um, do this. We'll sort that out soon, and you'll notice actually that it's um, it's it's placing the tier on the top left of the character. Now the reason it's doing that is because if you remember in the previous episode, um, if we go to Sprite Player, I set the origin as the top left, and I forgot to put it in the middle. So let's do that. Okay, and now if we go to play, the tier will appear on the center. Obviously it's, it's under the character but it is on the center and that's that's what we want, that's fine. So now we need to figure out how to fire this thing and actually make it move. So what we are going to do is we're going to go to the players create event and we're going to make a new variable. Now this variable is going to be global dot global dot dir which is going to stand for direction and that's it. Now the reason it's global is because other objects can access this variable and change it and read it and that's what we want so we're gonna hit the OK button and if we go back to step this is where we're gonna set the direction okay so um, if we press up the global dot dir will equal 90. Now 90 just means up. Um, 
and it, it kind of makes sense that so, you know like a, a 90 degree right angle so you know you straight up so that that's fine um, now we will add the rest of this in so just copy and paste that three times so one two three and you're gonna wanna change um, VK up to down left and lastly right so the global direction for down is 270 the global direction for left is 180 and for right it is just zero so let's test that show it see if that works Yep, I'm pressing all the arrow keys. We are still having a tier that's created. Now, let's get this tier to move, shall we? So, the way that we do that is we go into our tier object. And on the create, on sorry, we're going to add a create event. And we're going to put some code in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to say direction equals global dot so all that does is it sets this object's direction to the direction we have specified in this variable which is obviously set by whichever key that we press and we're also going to put speed equals 10 so it's going to set itself to that direction and move at a speed of 10 in whatever direction so let's just check that out and yep yeah, that's working fine Obviously, it's it's coming out as a stream rather than just one um, tier, so we will fix that in a moment. And to do that, all we need to do is we need to set up a an, an alarm, which is essentially just a timer. All right. So what we'll do is we will test it on just VK up for now. Um, so what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to go alarm um, 0 equals 10. Now what that will do is once we've created the alarm in the events, the alarm event, um, it means it, it's equal to 10. So every time um, this code is being, uh, every 10 frames the alarm will activate. Okay, so that is fine. What also what we're going to want to do here actually is if you go to the create event, we need to create a new variable called firing and just make that equal false. So back to the step and we're going to go in here we're going to say if firing equals false equal equals false I think you want there then this will happen right then it's gonna set the direction to 90 it's gonna enable the alarm and it's also gonna create this but we do not want it to create the checks we're gonna want to create this in the alarm okay so we're gonna cut that control and X and we will add an event alarm and we want alarm 0 now in here drag in another code box and all we're going to do is paste that in there so instance create and then it will create that now if we go back to the step real quick another thing you're going to want to do here is we're going to want to say um, firing now equals true so once you've pressed up it'll say okay you've pressed up is, is it firing if it's false it'll do this if it's true then it's not going to activate this and we can't fire anymore and that's, that's what we want, that's good. Now in the alarm after it's created the object we will then set firing to false because it's already fired so that means we're not firing anymore so let's just see how that works and we now should have a system in place where we can constantly fire bullets but only one at a time and yeah look at that there we go that is exactly what we wanted now all we're going to do is we are going to copy and paste that into the other 
um, sections of this. So what we'll do is we will I'm just going to copy and paste this into all of them like this. There we go. And now we just need to set the directions back to the way it was. So for down, if you remember it was 270. For left, it was 180. And for right, it was just zero. So again, let's just check that, make sure that's all working as intended. Yeah, we can fire now in every direction and that is that. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the episode. If Or what you can do actually, if you want to fire faster or slower, you can simply um, change these variables here. So alarm equals obviously 5 would make it go faster, 50 would be slower. So you can have a play with them and get a firing speed that you like. Um, in the next episode, we are going to introduce enemies and a basic enemy AI. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.